Nice my name's you. Nathan Epps. This is my seminar at Immortal MMA in Tamworth. Also check out my YouTube channel, Pro Striking, as well as Immortal MMA on YouTube. Standing on the edge of a cliff Realize there must be more to life than this Reaching for the stars, traveling so far Like a dragonfly Just grab my hand from him sin Now do the same thing standing to so just open them up. So now think about your feet as well. So like when you're punching and stuff, it's really important. So you're getting a, used to like turning your shoulders with your feet as well. So like the balls of your feet. So when we're punching, we always want to keep our feet side on the floor. So it's kind of the same movement when, when you're punching. Turn your torso, turn your feet. No matter how hard it gets, yeah. Better move out the way because I'm coming with harder hits. My head is He's fighting two English titles. So we're going to do now just a pummeling for the neck. So he's going to have two hands in the neck, and the first thing I want to do is exchange the grips. I'm going to come in with one arm, and then I'm going to pop the shoulder through here, and then once they like that score, I'm going to go the other side. Boom, then Mario's going to go for one, two. You want to get used to doing this one at a time, because so if I let go of both hands now, there's a good possibility Mario's going to pull my head down. But I never want that. I want to keep my back up and also get used to keeping your hips in. Because when my hips are in that, it's harder to knee. If I'm in my stance here, it's much easier to knee me and turn me as well. So when we're in a clinch, okay, look at that. I'm gonna injure me already. So feet are square, hips in, and then we're gonna exchange from there. So then Mario goes. So I sleep nice and light and relaxed to start with, like just a bit of a warm, put a little bit of resistance on the neck. And I'm uh, gonna do this for about a minute, just exchanging the grips. Harder than all that is you Better move, you might get knocked out Knocked out You Better move, you might get knocked out Knocked out You Better move, you might get knocked out Knocked out You Better move, you might get knocked out Knocked out So now what we're going to focus on is I don't know if any of you guys can compete Thai boxing But if you ever go to the levels with the elbows We have to be really mindful of the arms Because so, I see you can get elbowed now the other thing, I like the arm, one arm controls better for MMA and uh, I think it's good for turning as well. So when I'm snaking now, I'm going to go one arm around to the neck control and then the other hand's going to come peel off onto the arm here. What I'm going to do is cup his tricep and I want to press my forearm into where's his forearm now and my elbow's going to be here. The reason for that is if it's my arm straight, he'll just come straight underneath like this. Whereas if I've got a bent arm, if he tries to come underneath, that's kind of blocking it. If he comes up, the other thing, I want that purchase with my elbow underneath because I can lift here and there's obviously like duck unders and all sorts of things that you can do with you MMA guys um, more more techniques you can do from there this position as well the other person get used to cupping the bicep here because like I just said with the elbows a lot of the guys they forget especially guys from the wrestling background they cut the tricep but the problem is now boom I will elbow Wes so he, he gets used to it there so this now is actively defending. So if I try and elbow where he pushes against my arm, see, he blocks it. So he's using this arm as a, as a, a defense here. So it's very important. So then where snakes in, he's gonna snake in, and then you're gonna, there, peel there. So you can relax, so you don't have to be tense, you know what I mean? Be nice and relax a bit. And then I'll snake. Snake's gonna let me, boom, boom, peel. But you get used to this. So when we're drilling as well, you don't, any guys do jujitsu, you don't want to drill with like the dead body, do you? You know what I mean? So what I mean by that is if, if Wes is doing stuff with me and I'm just flopping around, he tries to grab my arms and stuff, and I'm just kind of like flopping around like this. I want to be like an active body. So I kind of get used to all the time of, the, of being like it's a, a live thing, but without the tension. So I'm not like being a stiff robot here, but I'm nice and relaxed. And then we flow here. So I'm being a bit of an active partner, just a little bit of resistance, but not so much that Wes is going to wake up like this tomorrow and he can't move his head anymore, yeah? So be aware of that. So one form of your partner is relax, exchanging the grips and get that arm. Shield my greed. That's how I get it. Success ain't no give us some days I don't hit, I don't slay. When I'm focused, I'm dangerous. They don't wonder when I'm anxious. Ain't no limit till I tank. I'm running on fumes. The hopper system don't amaze. The roads racing through the pavement. Get your hands out of my bag. I know that's 
because I've been in it. I don't need to brag. I got the wild hot. So you taking care of your business, but some friends do the math. I'm out of my pocket. Houston, we got a problem. I ain't perfect. Let them watch me elevating. Got them nuts. Cause I'm the pilot in the cockpit. No, stopping in the house. And who? Watch out, get it here. Watch out, get it here. Watch out, get it here. Who? Watch out, set it up. Bet you watch, shut it down. Watch out, get it win. I don't think they really wanna come. I guess the one that got a finger on the pen on the. Right. So, what you're gonna do now, first thing is practice a, just a, a general turn movement. So, if I've got Wes now, I'm gonna put my left hand on his head, and I'm just gonna practice turning. So, I'm gonna do about a 180. My left hand's on his neck, so what I'm gonna do is step with my right foot past him. As I do that, I'm gonna pull his head towards my hip. So, what I'm not doing is pulling him around like this, I'm pulling him down. So, I'm gonna step, pull, and then I'm gonna pivot this back foot all the way around behind me. Here. If I go right side, I'll step the opposite way. I go left here, and again, I'm putting his head down. And I always follow with him. So, what I mean by that is a lot of problems is people kind of like run past when they're turning. I want to go with him. So, I'm turning him, turning him. So, just practice that one for one. Person, go maybe go three or four turns each and then swap. So, this one now, the same turn, but I'm going to use the, that grip, the arm grip. So, I've got one on the neck, and I've got one on the arm. So I'm gonna pull and lift as, as I turn. See, so it's got a lot more leverage on the turn there. So it's like a steering wheel action. So I'm pulling and lifting as I step. My hips as well, they wanna come in. And this is an important one where I don't like run away from where I turn with him. So as I put his hand down, I turn with him. At the end now, I want to practice the knee. So I'm kneeing with this back leg. So this left leg's very much create the space for it. If I go right side, I'm gonna step with my left leg and my right leg's gonna be the one I'd end up kneeing with. So I'm gonna step, pull, this leg's come behind me now, and I can knee from there. When I'm kneeing, I'm obviously aiming for Wes's stomach, and I'm gonna do my ballerina's foot, but for the purpose of should knee really light, you know what I mean? Get used to kneeing, but knee light. So if I knee Wes, he feels it, but it's not, it's not hard, and I'm not aiming for his ribs either, I'm aiming for his stomach with this one. And when we get into the, the sparring a bit, that's kind of where we're gonna get used to aiming for with the front knee, the stomach. So step, turn, knee. Swap, step, turn, Knee. So like one form with your partner, do it a couple of times each. I ain't never been what you think you compare my line with the one about the cage. I need all the wins. Yeah, pay no L's, I gotta get a no call and quiz. Yeah, gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah, better move out the way. Now I'm gonna practice an escape from from uh, this position, probably the worst one. Um in terms of like uncomfortableness and like fear because I've seen Wes's main person has to pull my head down and knee me probably in the face. So I'm gonna keep my head up tall like this. I'm gonna push my hips in. The hips in is important because if he's pulling my head and I'm here now, it's no good. So you gotta think about like doing a deadlift or something or doing a squat, like I wanna keep that back strong. So if I start from here already, it's gonna be much easier for him to start breaking my posture down. So I stay really tall. Me as a tall person, I have to then go on my tiptoes so you taller guys can do use this. And it just makes it really hard for him. And it makes it harder for him to knee me as well. So you can't only really pull my head down, but to knee me now, he's got almost jump up and come off his feet. So I'm gonna start tall, and then from there, just help me out. I'm gonna push across his face here, I'm gonna use a palm of my hand and push it in his face. And then from here, I'm gonna lock his arm with my head and shoulder. The other hand then is gonna come up into the bicep. You see how I've got this good position now? Now I can knee, boom, into here. So I'm just gonna get to there and then, and then relax. So Wes grabs my head, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna make sure I try and use my shoulder to break that grip up, and when I can, I'm gonna come in with the space and peel the hand there. Wes is usually gonna, again, go, go to the same process. If he doesn't, I will start to elbow him with this side and knee and elbow there. So Wes is gonna instinctively, he's gonna to wanna to stop that, because now I can't elbow him, but I can knee from there. And this is a position now, for me, especially as a tall person, I'll stay here. So you gotta get used to, when I get into a dominant position, I don't have to always be swapping my hands. When I first started clinching, I was doing this too much like, you know what I mean? You don't really know why. It's just like getting used to like, I'm here now, boom, boom, I stay there. Wes has got to get out of this, I haven't got to do anything. You know what I mean? So once I get here, stay comfortable, do two or three knees and then, and then relax So Wes's go. So go like, one form with your partner, get into that position, hold it, and then do a couple of knees. Right. A 50-50 and a 50-50 from here like this. So 
because no, neither one has an advantage, neither one has the neck position, and we're both kind of effectively blocking each other, so I can't elbow from here, and it's a bit more difficult for me to grab his neck, because Wes can use his shoulders and arms to kind of, yeah, see how he's just putting his shoulder in the way? Kind of stops me getting his neck. And from here, I'll spend a bit of time here, this is where a lot of throws can happen, the steering wheel turns, but knee, so I want you to get used to kneeing each other, one for one, I'm gonna do one knee to the front of his stomach here, and then I'm gonna do one knee to the side. When I knee to the side, I'm aiming for his ribs, but I'm using the, the thigh, so the soft part of the leg, so I'm here, boom. See how I can't hurt him then? The whole point of training, I don't want to hurt my person, so I might need Wes for tomorrow, if anything else, as for selfish reasons. I need training partners the next day, so I can't break all my toys. So if, it, if I'm not a nice person, that's the your number one motive. If you're a nice person, it's because obviously you want to be nice to your friend, don't you? you want to look after him. So I need him soft there, boom. There, Wes goes to me. One, one. Even that, yeah, he knows then. So he, if you use the point of the knee and the ribs, you're gonna hurt each other. So it's about the thigh, boom, there. So you can slap the thigh in quite hard. Yeah, good. That's a good score. In a fight, all to do is change the difference. I just go to point. I need with the point. Boom, but if I do that in the gym, I'll break his ribs, and Wes is gonna have about six to eight weeks where he's sat at home and he's mad at me. So he goes, knee to the stomach, boom, knee to the ribs. Knee to the ribs, boom. Knee to the stomach, yeah? So just practice that one for one like that. Do a couple of knees each and get used to it and feel where you need to be knee. That's not hurting your body. Yeah. Where you're going to clinch is to work with him. So the goal for me is to like explore as many things as I possibly can and not just win. So if I'm just going to win, I'll just do this stuff. But it doesn't really necessarily level me up anymore. If I know I can do that to Wes every time, well let's say Wes does it to me, like Wes is a big strong boy, he's got a fight next week, pull my head down, great. We start again, do it again. What has Wes really learnt from doing that repeatedly for the course of three to five minutes? Not a lot. So if he knows he can do that, okay, he help me out, help me get better, help me learn how to like progress from that. So if I'm clinching Wes, I want to take my time and steady, get used to blocking positions. No, get, get into a good position, blocking the hands. But I let him work. Sometimes I'll let him knee. When I see the knee, I'll let him knee. Most of the injuries I see happen is when people panic. So like what might start off now is a knee to the thigh, with, with the thigh. If I pull back, oh, now all of a sudden it's a, a knee with the sharp part into my rib. And the same thing to the stomach or the balls. So if, if he does a front knee now, I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? All of a sudden I'm getting hurt. If I just put my hips in now and let him do it, I can see it. there's less likelihood of any panic happening and where it's hurting me. So you have to slow it all down. So sparring, the most important thing is to slow it all down. So I'm just relaxed. I'm not using my full strength. And sometimes, yeah, I'll let him get my head so I can practice getting out of it. What do I do from there? There's a particular position that I'm uh, stuck on. I'll, I'll go there deliberately so I can get practice like learning how to get out of it, I'm trying to figure it out and problem solve. So we're gonna go light, light clinching and just like knee for knee. Knee for knee. Change position. Wes knees. I'll get position. I knee. Wes gets position. Yeah? So keeping it really chill, really relaxed, and obviously, bear in mind, weight disadvantages, everything else that goes along with combat sports. If you weigh 15 kilo bigger than someone, it's going to be easier to do certain things. So, are you ready with your partner? That's me how I'm living when you're telling me. That's me how I'm telling them grace. Yeah, yeah. Hey, ask me how I did it. I'm telling them grace. Ask me how I'm living. I'm telling them great. Ask me how I did it. I'm telling them grace. Ask me how I'm living. I'm telling them great. New me, no time to waste. Look at me. Okay, so the, when I'm turning someone, like uh, the most common thing to do is people try and force it, but if Harley's standing really strong and he's got a good stance, he get your feet square, mate. That's it, bring it, yeah, exactly. If I try and turn him now, his base is good, he just step out, he, he's solid. So it's very hard to turn him in, so I can't force that. The best time to turn him is when he knees, so if he lifts the leg up to knee, well, he's on one leg now, that's the best opportunity to turn. So you've got to start getting used to feeling him and the timing. I should be able to feel, like even with my eyes closed, when he li lifts a leg up, so if he lifts that leg up, I can feel his weight go that way. Also, the side I want to turn him is the opposite to the leg. Because obviously if he lifts the leg up and I turn him this way, he just puts it back down and he restores his base. So he lifts his leg up, boom, I turn it away from him. He goes the other leg, but even with this one, I just turn the wrist and go that way. So just try and feel that now and get used to trying to turn him a little bit more, trying to get better positions. 
and I'm balancing the person a bit more now. So when you're ready, off you go. You see, I don't play. I keep wanting no out of shape. Need a hero, go find a cake. New me, no time to waste. Look at me, you see, I don't play. I keep running, no out of shape. Need a hero, go find a cake. Hey, no need for the people. I was masked up with no hero. Breakfast in the morning, it was cereal and an eat. As hard as you can, yeah? <laughs> okay, I've got our waist now. So the first thing we're going to do is just go over some simple jab defences. So this is a drill I do all the time, every week, with all my lads, and it, it helps a lot. Wes, I think, has got very good jab defence, haven't you, for the most part. And we just go through a sequence of um, techniques. So we're going to go parry the first one. So he throws a jab, boom. Slip the second one, outside. Slip the third one, inside. The fourth one, I'm going to squat, so I'm literally just squatting underneath. Then I've also got a block, so I'm going to do a double arm block here. And then the last one's a step back. So I'll go parry, slip, slip, squat, block, step back. And that is it, literally it. And you can obviously do them in any order you want. You don't have to do them in that particular order. So I'll go over them again. When I'm parrying, it's the same side, and I'm just going to knock it across here. The slip, I'm just turning my feet the same as we did in the warm-up when we was doing this. It's literally just that movement. Don't think about bending at the waist or anything. I don't want to lose my shape. So if I bend over this way now, I'm slightly off balance. If he comes with this shot now, he's going to crumple me. Whereas if I slip and keep my base strong here, if he throws the right hand, at the very least, if I take it, I've got quite a sturdy base. And that's what we always want to focus on. When I slip the inside, it's the same, keeping a nice sturdy base in shape. When I block it, again, keeping this nice strong base here. And the same with a step back. So I'm not leaning back. I don't want to see this. Because if my head goes over my back foot, then again, I've, I've, my, my balancing is going to be very good. I'll get away for it for one shot. If he throws two or three, then I'll start getting caught. So you always want to just maintain our shape with every defense. So parry, slip, slip, block, squat, step back. Yeah. So go over that with your partner. Go one for one, go through the ball. And throw the jabs at the same speed and rhythm to get used to it. That boy keep going in, I can't let it go, but get lethal. Watch how I'm showing it from JFK down to Heathrow again. I gotta keep going it up. I'm going beast mode again, keep flowing and keep knowing that I've arrived and keep blowing it five aside that ball's going in many times. What we're gonna do now is that really probably one of the most important things I could show is the smother. So the smother you're gonna use it usually after a step back. So where steps back off the jab, boom. What's gonna happen is now, because I've missed, usually, naturally, I feel like oh I've missed, I've got to cover more ground, so I'll overcome it on the second one. When I overcommit, where's his thing going to meet me with his footwork? He's going to come in to here. What he's done there also is he's changed his level to come underneath my punch. And I'll use like a bit of a Philly shell guard. A Philly shell is this. Arm down here. Shoulder rolling. This hand protecting the head from the hook. This protecting the body. In boxing, we'll use this primarily because it allows him to see. And, and see the right hand coming, boom. Whereas sometimes this defense, by turning this way, you can't see for a second, he's putting a blinker on, so this defense is commonly used. It's also good on the inside, because he has a frame to push. That's it. So you see how he can create that little bit of space with the arm? So he can deal with this, he's got a block here, and then also this is blocking his body, so this elbow is blocking that. You're not really allowed to hit the kidneys in boxing, but this is a, a solid defense, that's your pretty shell. That's kind of how you come in to close the gap with a smother. He doesn't want to be here, because he's open to the body, but also it's hard to punch from here when both hands are, are tied to the head like this. It's hard to punch from here from this close. So you kind of have to drop your base a little bit. So when I'm punching the body from here, I'm not, I'm not going to be tall, I'm going to come low. Squat my way, squat my base, nice wide feet, and come in low here. So the first thing is going to go step back from the jab, boom, step in on the second and smother. Now he's ruined my work. So you've got that kind of good pressure for it. Someone like Wes, for example, Wes very good at marching someone down. The, if I keep going backwards, he's going to get me to the wall eventually. And he, you know, he's always able to land more and more shots. Whereas if I come in and take that away from him, well then he has to readjust then. And it puts him on the back foot for a second. He's like, oh shit, I'm too close. Can't punch any more through what I wanted to do. So he goes backwards one, fuck, in on the second one. And it only works really from that backwards movement. This is already too late to do if he's on the wall. It's too late on the wall because once I've got him here, I can start teeing up. So to smother me now is very difficult. It relies on him being able to draw me onto it. So he missed one, and then he comes in now. 
Yeah, so you can't allow the person to get you to hear before doing that. It's really hard to tie someone up now. It's, it's, it's horrible. Um, so you have to create the space. You have to use space. It's before you get to the ropes that you'd use this. So with your partner now, one for one practice that kind of pull back, step in. So double up the space on the step in. Let's say I can't do a Philly show, it's not my it's not in my wheelhouse. I'll just step in. So like I'll go backwards and then I'll just come to here and literally just smuggle some of work. That is a good option. Because now if Wes is trying to land his long shots, it's um smothering his work. If Wes wants to land more effective boxing his range, he's got to step back. So he's got to step back now to re-establish his range and get back on it. So we're going to do some jab sparring now. First thing I'm going to do one for one. So I'm going to throw a jab and I'm going to try and, because it's a bit sparring like now, I'm not throwing it hard, but I can fake a little bit. I can change the angle of my jab a little bit to try and catch him and Wes can defend it however he wants. Once I've done my jab, Wes can then do his jab. When we get into a bit of the rhythm and you start understanding it, I could jab him back straight away maybe. So maybe you go like, and then yeah, can we get increase the rhythm? You know, so just one for one like that to start with, get into a bit of a groove, and I see, understand that when Wes hits me, it's relaxed like that, boom, nice and light, no, no like heads getting blown off yet. Keep it really steady and fi find a good balance. The other thing when I'm jabbing, I'm aiming for Wes's head all the time, it's up to Wes to defend it, so I'm not hitting the air like this, because this trains bad habits, it gets Wes reaching for things that are never going to hit him. If someone's hitting the air in front like that, I won't do anything because there's no need to, because he's, he's missing me. He should be trying to jab me, yeah, like that. I uh, can always trust Wes to do it properly. Right, so are you ready with your partner? Nice and relaxed, nice and chill, just use the jab, okay? So try and fix up your defenses, try and block one, try and slip one. Ask me how I'm living, I'm telling them great. Ask me how I did it, I'm telling them great. The, the jab is the most common thing someone will use to start their offensive. So now we're going to figure out how we can take it away with the legs as well. So we're going to do a couple of defences against the jab, uh, incorporating the legs. So the first one, where he steps in heavy on a jab, I can parry now, and that's a perfect time to locate. Boom. His weight is too heavy on his front foot, and it's very hard to block. If this is happening to inspiring as well, because it happened to me for a while, I, I was better boxing to start with. So when I'd come in, I'd always get kicked in the leg, and I'd kind of be like, why, why am I always get kicked in the leg? And the, the answer was, is like, because you're trying to land your jab. Like, um, you know, if, it's easy to block from here. You know, where's, where's it? I'm always going to block that. But once I've committed to an attack, I kind of even make a decision that like, I'm accepting the fact that when I'm landing my jab, I'm going to take a low kick and then maybe I can follow up off the back of that. But it's like a decision in your head, like, okay, like that's what's going to happen. Or he's chewing my leg up to pieces and then I'm like, okay, I can't be as committed with my jab because now when a jab, he's going to kick me in the leg. So I'll start being light on my front leg and adjust in my stance so I can so I can do, deal with it. So that you'd have to make that decision yourself basically the point, depending on how damaged your leg was. Sometimes I'm jabbing him and he's kicking me in the leg, but then I can come in after and happy days, you know, especially if I was fighting K1, that's the way to go. Like um, if I was fighting tie boxing, my legs like get chewed up a bit, then I might be more, you know, here, so then I can deal with it. If he's trying to kick me after, I'm less committed with my jab for the purpose of being able to block the kick. So the first one you got parry kick here. The second one, I'm going to do a switch kick or a lead leg kick. Some people might not like switching, they might want to lift the leg up here and kick across his body. He comes in, that way. If I want to switch it, I prefer to switch so I get more power. So I'm kicking across the open side of his body. If he's southpaw, I'll parry this hand and I'm going to kick this way across his body there to be a right kick. You can kick the back as well, so if he's orthodox, he comes in with a jab, I can kick his back here, well that's fine too, same side, that way. The last one, I'm going to do an inside sweep, so maybe more advanced, you can get this one, so he steps in, 
it there. And then from the back of that, I'm going to let it again all knee. So I'm getting used to the time and it can come in head on that front leg. And he's going to sweep the inside of my leg with a kick across. This one, it's more of a drag. So if any of you guys that have been training for a while, we get a side go again with. That's it. Rather than booting it, if you boot it, it's going to work. You're going to work. It's like a kamikaze, that is. You're both going to uh, be in a bit of pain. But if I sweep it, it shouldn't hurt my shin. So he steps in. Boom. And again. Boom. Boom. Thanks, Wes. Helping out there. So really take a little step back on that one and you're just hooking it and pulling it across there. And then if I can switch it again, or if you get the time, if you're too close, you can do a nick, boom, off the back of that. So just go through them defenses. You've got low kick, left body kick, right body kick, and then you can do that one. Uh, take it in turns with your partner. So the, the first one, defensively, like where's going to throw the jab again? This one now, because I, I parried it in and this way, I'm going to switch it. So I parry, switch knee here. Don't worry too much about your hands. If you're not pumped through the knee, don't worry about your hand placement for now. But it's not the most important thing. The most important thing with the knee is your hips on it, so staying long. So what I mean by that is not like falling in the head, staying long with the knee. Oh. If he goes across, I can parry with this hand and the right knee. Boom. So I parry. Boom. Parry. I don't keep it there. So what I mean by that is I'm not doing this. I don't need to. It's just a little knock. Boom. Boom. My hands come back to my head straight away. Boom. Sorry, Wes. This one now, off of the left hook. So he's going to throw the left hook. I'm going to catch it to answer the phone. So I'm going to answer the phone. My hands come to the back of my head. It's important, this one. Especially the guys that fight in the smaller gloves. Sometimes this isn't enough, and I've seen a few people like knocked out from, from a not guarding tightener. And if I guard like this all the time, like yeah, there's things that can come from it, you can start setting me up for other things, but I'm safe. And even if it was to throw a head kick, for example, this is always better, because my hand comes to the back of my head. Like this area here, if you get hit there, it really disorientates you. So like a lot of people aim for the chin and stuff, but a few of the ties, like uh, your Detcher, who we trained with before, he said we aim for the head, the side of the head, it makes you he was it makes you dizzy like you see the birds. So covering up here is important because if, if I'm just here like this and he hits me around the head or he even skims up the top here, boom, like knock me out. You see the Johnny Walker one the other week in MMA, the UFC one, it's the top of the head, like there, boom. But it really hurts, man, and obviously it switched him off. So I want to just cover here, kind of tuck my head up. So I'm gonna catch it first, then I'm gonna come same grip up with practice at the start of the class on a clinch. I'm going to tie him up, and from here, my left hand's going to either come to the outside here, and I've got the left knee where I can pull him onto it, or I can come inside here and engage in a clinch this way and right knee. So I catch the left hook, there, there. It's important I block first, don't reach. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to do that. If I reach here, this is it. He keeps hitting me really hard every time, like, he doesn't care, does he? Boom, I'll block first, block, and then fall in. So this is an important skill when I'm under pressure, man. Like if I'm under pressure on the ropes now, this is a better one than, you know, like this one, I'm drawing him onto it, but this one, I can be on the ropes now, and I just, oh, I'll tie him up. And if someone's getting the better of me, in a boxing fight, I'll do, I'll do this all day. Like, um, I did it in, I had a boxing fight in Australia, and the ref told me off for it, but I was like, man, I'm surviving, I don't care. Guy's got me on the ropes, he's swinging hell for leather at me, I'm gonna tie him up, and then just do all of this, ref, ref, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't care. So he, he hits me, tie up, just tie up here. Stall him, you know what I mean? Get over here, he's holding, you know what I mean? I'm holding here, but I'm not holding him technically. Even a boxing or K1, you know, sometimes you've got to catch your breath and slow the pace down. It's important that I don't let him get on top of me. If I'm, if I'm doing this now, and he's, he's doing this, and I start trying to open up now to fight back, that's when I'll 100% get caught. You're seeing it a lot now in the one championship with some of the fighters, the kickboxers especially, where they're getting pinged because they're trying to open up an exchange. Andy Sauer did it with Marek Rigori in the other week. Should have just tied him up. I don't care if I'm not allowed to. He hits me now. I'm going to tie him up if I'm under pressure. I've seen more tight now. Boom, I can knee. And we've got these ones that boom. We can pull him. Boom, it's a good position. K1, I might not be allowed to do that, but I'm still going to smother him. Boxing, the same thing. I'm still going to tie it up and, and save myself. Slow the pace down until the ref's going to break it. So go through the defensive. Go Le jab, left knee. Cross, right knee, left hook, catch, tie up, knee. Yeah? 
So practice that with your partner, go one for one, go through the wall. So the first one I'm going to do is a cross, and I'm just going to guard it. I'm going to use that to step through into my left knee here. I always like to hold the hands. So when I come in, I kind of like pull them down. It's not a massive thing. Like, it, it's hard to find a balance. It just comes with timing. But don't like, go too stiff with it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to tap, boom, there. Second one, left hook, turning, right knee. So the hook naturally will turn in that way. And it opens his body up to the right knee. So I go left, right there. Left, right. The last one we're going to do, the left hook to the body. So I go left hook to the body, and this is now going to initiate a clinch on my turn. So I go left hook here. Where's usually you'll sit back to protect it. So when you block a body shot, you sit your weight back behind you. And from here now, I'm going to use that for a tire and come in and grab here. So Wes does it to me. He goes left hook to the body, boom, and then he's going to push his hand through. That's it, and then control my arms, and then he's got a knee from there. So I've got cross, boom, left knee. Left hook, right knee, hook to the body, tie up, and knee to the body. So practice those three now. So it's a setting up the knee offensively with a punch now. stand your ground, it's a bit of a, uh, a battle of wills in a way, that's why the, they say the Muay Thai fighter, which is the knee specialist, is the hardest fighter to fight, because they've usually got the biggest engines, and they're usually always coming forward and in your face, it's a very drowning style, so I can't be going backwards here and avoiding it, so it's hard to knee now, so I'm going to come in, See, getting used to holding my ground, using my eyes, and just seeing the shots and relaxing under pressure. So you're getting used to like, probably the most scary range in a fight is close. If me and Wes are fighting and we're this far away, it's not too bad. I'm not getting hit. As soon as I'm in here, it's like, oh shit, I'm tense now. I'm nervous. But it's when you get relaxed here, which you do our most of our training here in the most stressful bit, and then you'll become relaxed and everything's like getting easier and you'll start, you'll slow down a bit. It won't feel as fast and frantic. So when you're ready, your partner took close, box and knee sparring. Keep it nice and relaxed and work with your partner, not against them. <laughs> what are the fucking back <laughs> <laughs> and Wes gonna block, then he does the same. So go, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we're gonna do this on the same side as your partner for 30 seconds and then we're gonna swap leg. So it's a kick defense drill. So when I'm blocking, my elbow's coming to the, sorry, Wes, to the inside, my knee's coming to the inside of my elbow here so I'm not elbowing myself in the thigh. And then I'm gonna switch my feet to get that little bit of a bounce. So do it steady like that, so don't go too crazy. Try and control your legs and keep the pace up. It's quite a tiring exercise. You only need to do that for 30 seconds and swap time. Like a double block with the arms instead. So let's say I can't, I don't have the time to block with the leg, or let's say my shin's really sore and broken. And I don't want to block my leg anymore, I'm going to block with the arm. So Wes is going to kick me, and I'm going to double block here. I turn towards it, 
and I bring my forearm in and my, my uh, triceps going to protect my ribs here. So I'm not here because otherwise the kick still comes around and it still hits me in the back and it hurts. So I kind of turn towards the kick and protect and this is just a secondary block. Do not reach out for it like this because uh, you'll hurt your wrist. I've done that in a fight before and uh, it was really painful. Like I thought I broke my wrist because obviously this is never going to be strong against the uh, shin. So I only use it here, it's just a pad. So we're going to do it one for one like that. So Wes kicks me here, I block. Boom, then I kick Wes, he blocks. Boom, then Wes kicks me, the switch kick. I block, then I kick Wes. Boom, then he kicks me. Boom, then I kick him. So once you get comfortable with it, it's also about getting used to taking an impact and replying. So when Wes kicks me, I'm not getting knocked off balance. Like uh, sometimes I have to think, if I can't defend it, well at least then I can hit him back, you know what I mean, for his troubles. So if I can't get my leg in the way to block it, or I can't be clever and, and sway back or whatever <laughs> it depends, at least then if I'm gonna take it pretty much full on, well I'm gonna reply back with my own kick. So my base is strong, and I'm in a good position to attack back again. So he goes here, boom, I go here. He blocks, boom, he goes kick, boom, I go kick. And you don't have to think about which leg it is, you know, just kick back straight away. So you get used to just blocking and blocking. Your eyes can react to what leg Wes is doing, or your partner's doing, yeah? drill in terms of just one for one a combination so what I'm gonna do is any combination with the hands and finish with either leg body kick or knee so my, my objective is to, to get the volume so I'm gonna come in with the hands for three or four punches rather than staying long like one punch and then doing a leg attack I'm gonna do a couple get some get my points in and then finish with a, with a leg attack so a strong attack the other thing is why the leg attacks are successful against this style because like we said earlier, if the person's focusing on boxing defense, they plant their legs really wide, and it's very difficult to lift the leg to block. They're, they're much more sturdy in, in some ways, but then they're vulnerable to being able to block a kick, which at the end of the day, even if it's not hurting them, it scores points. So if I can come in with Wes now, but kick him. You know, it's gonna be hard for him to block that last kick, and it's an easy point for me. The same with a knee, if he's got his hands down here, I can finish on the knee, no problem. So you're gonna go one for one like that, and also the same respect. I'm getting used to covering up and being defensively sound. This is always like um, your safest option. If, you, if you're stuck for ideas, rather than slipping and moving your head, which can get a bit risky, here's always going to be pretty sound, especially if I was buzzed. Like, I don't know if you saw Amir Khan, Kel Brook the other week. What did Amir do when he got <laughs> buzzed? He went here straight away, because it's pretty safe for the most part, especially against uh, people that aren't picking shots as well. So if you here, if I was sparring a novice or competing against a novice, I'm just going to go basic here because I don't always know the angles of their shots and stuff, and I'm always going to be safe here. So it's pretty tidy. So Wes comes in with his combination, bump, bump, then I come in. Bump, bump, bump. Bump, bump. That's it. So I can go finish with a leg, of a kick or a knee to so the leg or body. Yeah. So you're ready with your partner, one for one like that. Pressure fighter versus clever fighter, but the, the drill is to focus on getting the, the fighter better at being clever rather than the other style. So, on the pressure fighter now, it's not for my benefit, it's for Wes's benefit. So, Wes is going to get better at time. You could call it like Thai style versus K1 style if you want, but we're, we're working more on now Wes being a bit clever under pressure. So, if I'm coming in, Wes is going to try and use his jab use his kicks and score his points without letting you get on top of him. If he wants to tie him in for a clinch, you know what I mean? That's, that's good. You can do a knee and then we break again, disengage. It's about Wes getting used to dealing with a bit of pressure and uh, being able to pick me up a little bit, counter and move away. If he has to use the, the route, move around a little bit, stop me getting on top of him. Not that much, that's insane. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really good one. So like, I'll come see use my kicks as well. I can try and you know, he wants to block that and be clever. So I, I love this style, we used to do it all the time. I, I lived in China for a bit, and I, uh, one of my Russian friends, Farhad, he was from Belarus, and they had a lot of fights in the IFMAs, and he had like 150 IFMA fights, and this is what they do all the time. They do pressure fighter versus um, clever fight, we call it monkey style. So the monkey style fighter is like playful. You know, Wes is coming in trying to pressure me. I'm 
getting used to sweeping him, landing my points. And this is just equally as effective in K1 as, as, as Muay Thai. Because basically, if I could disrupt Wes's rhythm, if he's coming in for the pressure, and then I can come in and tie him up, he doesn't get his points, you know what I mean? So I'm getting used to slowing down the pace for a fighter that may be stronger than me. I always say, like, um, if, if I've got a little pistol and Wes has got, like, a bazooka, you know what I mean? He's always going to win that one-punch exchange, so I can't be trading with him. I've got to think smarter with what I'm doing. Especially some people in the, the gym have got weight advantages, things like that. So you have to use what you've got. So it's working on skills. So Wes is coming in, playing with the pressure, I'm trying to pick him off, you know, push kicking, you know what I mean, use my face, tie him up, and just getting used to that, and that's how light I want us to go, just playing like this, so he's not, he's not blitzing me and oh, concussing me and that, like, oh, wait, he's winning, <laughs> he's being really, really light with it, so I'm getting used to seeing the shots and trying to pick off my counters, you know what I mean, I can still box with him, but it's not about exchanging, it's about, you know, moving after and being a being a bit more clever and crafty with what you're doing rather than getting stuck into a dog fight. So decide who's doing what first, uh, your partner's like your one and your two. So one's gonna be monkey style, the two's gonna be the pressure fighter. Sometimes I might be boxing here, I might come in a bit heavy on the hands, landing my boxing, move, practicing that. Wes is obviously doing what he wants to do, he's doing his game. Other times I might be coming up with more of a tight fight, I might be long in it, you know what I mean? I might be coming into the me. When I'm sparring, I love to do the long rounds, I love to go through stars as I'm sparring. Sometimes I like to focus more on my kicks, you know what I mean? We're still normal sparring, then I like to focus on my knees. Sometimes I like to come in and, and box. And that way then I'll become more of a, uh, a complete fighter so I can, I can practice everything and also deal with different problems. So, for example, if Wes is a Muay Cow fighter, it might not be optimal for me to be boxing with him because he's going to grab me every time and knee me. So it might be better if he's a Muay Cow fighter to be kicking him, keeping him away, using my teeth to stop him from coming in to land his knees. You know what I mean? It, it might be a case of if he's a kicker, case of coming in with my boxing and getting on top of him a little bit if he's not comfortable in the clinch and then using that against him, using that weapon against him. So it's not so much a com competition with Wes, but it's about exploring the different styles and what works against what, what strategy do I need to use against the problem I'm dealing with. And then you get used to, like uh, in a round, making adjustments, me and Wes are sparring. You know what I mean? Okay, he's going to be jab. Wes has got to deal with my kicks now, he's got to deal with a problem. Let's say he starts coming in, he's kicking me back. He's winning his point. Okay, now I've got to adjust to that. I'll come in with the clinch now, I'll go with my knees. So it's about being clever and thinking about what you're doing with the problem solving, rather than being like, the whole time, every round, every day. You know what I mean? It's like, sometimes you like be more, have more variety with what you're doing, and be more creative with what you're doing as well. So with your partners now, touch gloves, normal sparring. Oh, injury. Never see me 
One person's boxing, the other person can only defend. And you can only, you can defend however you want, but only defend. So no boxing. So I'm with Wes now. I can just move it in with jabbing him. One, two. This is obviously for his benefit, not for mine. So I'm not taking advantage of Wes not being able to tip me back and trying to muller him. I'm trying to get him better and get him more relaxed with a bit of pressure. I keep my punches at a nice rhythm. So what I mean by that is, if Wes is coming up, don't do this. You understand? He cannot defend that properly. He will just do this. So I'm going to keep my, my punches quite clear and obvious. So you get used to them. You get used to it. You get used to it. Yeah, lovely. Bump, bump, bump. Yeah, so you're going to just do a two minute only defense. It's for your eyes. And try and stay close to the person. So obviously you're getting the more reps in. So the goal is not to get hit on this one. Don't take punches in the face. We're going back now. Future expediting now. We on the fast track now. They want to hand. To see us on the map now, it's time to act out. Hit the Whoa, top, hey. at the top of the class on the road. Yeah, it's time to run it up, get it low. Maxed out with the power to the road. So we'll do a few stretches that'll help with your hip mobility a little bit and obviously stop you feeling a sore tomorrow too. So you just push that through, you're gonna hold that. That's it. The harder you push, the further you pull the leg back, the deeper you'll feel the stretch in your quad. That's good. Excellent and change. Push that hip through there. Anyone got any questions or anything? Oh, good. <laughs> Anyone learn anything today? Yeah. yeah. Right, good, that's the main thing. Okay, five bits now. Bring your legs in front of you, cross your shins, but keep your shins straight across like this. You should feel this on your hips. You're going to reach forward, try and get your head to the floor. You're not going to be able to get it down there, but that's it. You should feel it on your hips. That's good. I'm going to hold that there. Yeah. Why are you doing something like that? He's just more flexible than we That's just... Yeah. I'm looking around him now. He's down here. He's been practicing that at the moment. Yeah. And relax. <laughs> so swap the legs over now. Change, change side on that. So go to the other, other shin on the top. And then just lean again. Yeah, that's good. Some people will be more flexible than others. <laughs> you hold that there. And relax on that. This one now is the, probably the worst one. It's called the frog stretch. So I'm gonna come up onto my knees and I'm gonna want my feet flat on the floor like this and in a straight line. And I'm gonna come up onto my fingertips and sit, sit my bum back as low as I can and you should really feel it in the front of your legs there. The deepest, oh, I can't do any more than that. Oh. But yeah, you want you, don't bend your feet in like this, keep them out and straight. That's it. Hold that there. Is you fucking, is you born a fucking acrobat? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no hips up. <laughs> I think I've been getting close to them. Okay, now slowly bring your feet together. That's it, and now bring your hands up forward and sit back here. Just feel that in your groin. Yeah, that's good. Hold that there. I'm getting crap in my toe. <laughs> You're getting the cramp in the foot. Yeah, 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 I get that. Don't worry. That's good. Now slowly bring your legs in, walk forward on your hands, and lower back, hips to the floor. That's it. Good stretch on the lower back. That's good. Now sit back, bring your knees together, and try and get your head to the floor. So child's pose, and then arms out while you slide your leg and holding that. Stretch out your lower back, that one. If you can get your head to the floor, you, you're doing good. 
Yeah, some people might not feel like this is a stretch, others will feel like it's, it's hard. <laughs> Let's go and relax on that one now. Then we're gonna go pigeon to the last one. I'm gonna bring my foot up in front of me here, hold my leg, and I'm gonna slide my other leg out behind me as far as I can. Yeah, then if you can reach forward, like this fella. <laughs> reach forward here, you can't come low, you really stretch out your piriform. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, right. <laughs> He's up to no good he is. <laughs> no, you don't want to know what I do in my bedroom. Let's <laughs> go hold up, 10 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> And relax on that one and change side if you're ready. Last one. Hold it there. Ten seconds. And time. Well done everyone, we'll finish there for the day, bro. Good stuff.